Okay, this is going to be a demonstration of our Western Electric 755A crossbar PBX. It was built in March of 1955. They had two types of this system. One would support 10 stations, the other, like this, would support 20. The bottom crossbar switch is for stations 20 through 29. The upper switch is for 30 through 39. The upper set of relays are all the station relays. The bottom row is common for operating the switches. But for station 20, that's these three. See this one gives the timing for operating the switches. Uh, the way the switches work is a horizontal can select upper or lower. You can see a little pin moving in there. So it'll select which set of contacts it operates. Upper or lower contact. Just a little better view. And the hold magnet, the vertical, pushes that pin over to operate those contacts. So if I select that and push it over to operate those contacts, I select front two. The phones I have hooked up today are this one. It's a Western Electric 466, which was made for this crossbar switch. And the other is a Western Electric 564 that I just finished cleaning up. And I modified it to work like a 566, which would have also been made for the crossbar. So we have trunks 1 through 4, which are down here. There's one and three, two and four over there. And above that are the three intercom links. It'll support three links between stations at once. But trunk one is not hooked to anything. I'll take it off hook. And I'll show how it works here. That phone is station 20. It'll be right here. So when I take it off hook for trunk one, you should see the upper magnet go to select the lower set of contacts on the horizontal and then the hold magnet will go in to hold the pin there to operate those contacts. So the only thing held in is the hold magnet. This is still loose to operate again in case any of these other stations need to connect to something. So and the hold magnet will stay in until I put the phone back on hook. So that is trunks one. Trunk two is hooked to our step-by-step -step demo switch here. So I can select trunk two and get dial tone there. Dial phone through there. And it'll ring the phone on the other side. So that's trunks one, two, three, and four, and then intercom. One of the things that I don't really like about this system is, as built, it did not have lamps on the intercom buttons. But there was a modification later to give station line lamps, and we're currently working on getting that going. So I don't know if you can hear the dial tone, but it's pretty neat. So the other phone is station 21, so I can call it. See all the common timing down here to pulse out busy tone, ringing, and like that. And I can answer it. Likewise, I can pick this one up and dial station 20. and it'll ring the 466. And hold works just like you think it would. The neat thing about the PBX phones is the hold button releases the trunk key on the downstroke, not the upstroke like a key system set would have. And it will not hold unless it senses something there. So trunk two, there's something there, so I can actually put it on hold and seize another line. And all that shows on all the phones. Incoming calls on the trunks. Trunk 2 is hooked to this. I can take this off hook and dial into it. So it 
senses the ringing and flashes the keys on the phone to signal an incoming trunk call. But the phones do not ring on trunks, only local calls have them ring. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I had a trunk, I'll wait till it times out here and show it. When I had a trunk hold, it does not have hold link. They had another modification to use a couple KTUs to give hold link for those lamps, like a key system would have. So, the big difference between this and a key system is the, lo the private local links instead of just a common intercom. And it'll support three. If I can take this one off, dial station 30. It'll ring a phone out there. And I can take this one off hook and dial another station. And it calls that too. And it will support three links like that at once. If it's maxed out and somebody goes off hook on local, it will give busy tone until one of the links becomes vacant. Uh, down in the bottom is a battery tray. Originally it would have had batteries. The bottom row of relays is a charging circuit for that. But we don't have batteries. We're just running it off the key system power supply. But it's easier. So that's all I can think of to say about it. If anyone has any questions, just let me know.